Good morning and welcome to the video. Today is my long run of the week and we are doing 30 miles. And the best part is it just started raining outside. First thing is first, heart rate monitor. I posted a photo on Instagram yesterday that received a lot of attention. It was on my story. And I posted my, my run from yesterday, which was 7.15 miles at a pace of 8.03 minutes per mile. And my average heart rate was 139. And I had a lot of responses and questions about a lower heart rate while running and how to achieve that. And that's what I wanna talk about in this video. So first things first, you gotta throw on your chest heart rate monitor. I really don't trust the watch or like going by my, my watch. I only trust the heart rate monitor. So I'm gonna throw this on, grab my fuel. So far I've consumed two scoops of G1M Sport. I'm gonna carry two gels with me for this first segment. And I'll swing back by the house, pick up this bottle, which has another two scoops of G1M Sport and two more gels in here. So fuel for this entire run, four scoops of G1M Sport and four spring energy gels. Long run Saturday complete, 30 miles in four hours, nine minutes and 19 seconds, 819 minute per mile pace and total weekly mileage down there, 74.05 miles. I'll be honest, I am a little tired after that one. 30 miles, solid week of training, but what I'm most happy with in terms of that run was my average heart rate. My average heart rate was 142 beats per minute, average. And I wanted to keep it below 149. I was aiming towards the mid 140s because I follow the math 180 formula, which is 180 minus your age, I am 31. So that means 180 minus 31 is 149. 149 should be based off of the math 180 formula, my max aerobic heart rate. Not my max heart rate, my max aerobic heart rate. So if I keep my heart rate below 149 for my endurance sessions where I'm focusing on building this aerobic foundation, then I'm training in an aerobic state. And when you train in an aerobic state, you can build this aerobic foundation over time, which we'll dive deeper into throughout this video. Starting off with a little milk, one scoop Nutter Bar Blast whey protein powder, one scoop chocolate vegan protein powder, fresh local honey, two tablespoons natural peanut butter, one tablespoon of flax seed, one tablespoon of chia seeds, one tablespoon of raw cacao powder, one entire whole fresh banana, and about a cup of frozen bananas. is the post run power protein smoothie. This is well needed after a 30 mile run. Perfect, great consistency, great flavor, super thick. Yeah. I wanna interrupt this video to let you know it is sponsored by ShipStation who is the leading web-based order management and shipping software that we personally use at BPN to ship out all of our orders. And they are giving you guys 60 days for free. So when I first started BPN, the way I was fulfilling orders was I would go to each respective major carrier's website. I would input the order data, put it out, and then drop off the package at that respective location. 
And then when we transitioned to ShipStation, it made things a whole lot easier because it integrates with all the major shipping carriers and you can fulfill orders from one spot. Now the way ShipStation works is that you can import all of your orders from different platforms, whether that be Amazon, eBay, Etsy, your personal e-commerce platform like Shopify that we personally use, and you can use a very simple platform to fulfill all of them. And not only does it make shipping easier, but you also save money because you get discounted rates for shipping that is usually reserved for Fortune 500 companies. So if you are interested in automating your fulfillment operations, making it easier and save money, go to shipstation.com slash Nick Bear to get a 60 day free trial. That is 60 days free of ShipStation. Thank you guys, now back to the video. So I like to touch on this topic every couple months on this channel because I am very passionate about heart rate training and using and utilizing the Maffetone method to train within and under your max aerobic heart rate. And the reason is because the first two plus years that I was running, I didn't understand this. If I was supposed to go run five miles for a day or 40 minutes, I was going to run that five miles or 40 minutes as hard and fast as possible. And what happened over those two plus years, I didn't get any faster. Literally, didn't get any faster. I even got worse. There were times where I was so overtrained from running so hard all the time that I got slower. And it wasn't until I started implementing the Maffetone method and training under my max aerobic heart rate that I started getting faster. Like it just, it, it works. I like to follow the 80-20 rule where about 80% of your running is aerobic, building this aerobic foundation. And then 20%, depending on what you're training for, is either track workouts, tempo runs, threshold, it's faster stuff that is above your max aerobic heart rate. Our body doesn't know pace, but our body knows effort. And we can measure effort in two different ways. One is perceived effort. Like if someone asks you on a scale of one to 10, how hard is that? You might say five, you might say six, you might say seven. That is perceived effort. It's subjective. But then there's objective effort, which is measured. Like heart rate, we have this data that we can use to reach certain levels of fitness and make improvements. Now it's this easy to get started. Two pieces of equipment that you do need for this. One, some type of smartwatch. I have the Garmin Phoenix 6 Pro and I enjoy it, uh, as well as a chest strap heart rate monitor. I have the Garmin one, but again, you don't need to get Garmin, but they sync together via Bluetooth. So that's how you're going to measure heart rate and track it real time as you're running. Then all you need to do is use this formula. So it's 180 minus your age equals your max aerobic heart rate. So a quick example, I'm 31 years old, 180 minus 31 equals 149. That is my max aerobic heart rate based off of math 180. Now I have these numbers down here. This is what I shoot for when I run to stay in aerobic range, between 135 and 145. I don't wanna to get too close to 149, so I give myself a little buffer. And I, I typically back off about 10 beats per minute. So my range that I aim for is 135 to 145 beats per minute. And as I'm running, I just look at my watch every you know, two, three minutes to make sure I am in the right range for max aerobic heart rate. So the number one thing you can do right now to start getting faster, it's not a new pair of shoes, it's not the next generation GPS watch, it's not lighter shorts, it's not more 800 meter repeats, it is building this right here building your aerobic capacity. And it takes time, like you have to be patient. If I look at my training two years ago, and then a year ago, and then today, the biggest difference that I felt on that 30 mile run this morning is that my aerobic capacity has improved dramatically over time. 
and it takes time and you have to be patient with it. But when you build that aerobic foundation, then you can build off of it. Then the anaerobic stuff really matters. The tempo, the threshold, all of that work really comes. But there's one thing you can do to get faster, build that aerobic base by staying below your max aerobic heart rate. So I'm gonna share a recipe with you guys. This is called my beef and potato mash bowl. I'm actually working on a cookbook right now that, that should be done in the next two weeks and I'm gonna offer that for free. So I'll, I'll, I'll just distribute that for free. You guys can reference it and then cook a lot of the same meals that we cook on a regular basis that we thoroughly enjoy and are healthy. Now obviously, as the name describes, the two main pieces of this recipe, the potatoes, these are just golden yellow potatoes that I microwaved for eight minutes and then diced up. It's probably about 12 ounces of potatoes. And then this is some 80-20 grass-fed, grass-finished ground beef that I cooked up and seasoned. What I'm gonna do is throw the potatoes in a pan with some beef tallow. I'm gonna cook it in beef tallow and then I'm gonna season it just with this allspice, which is like salt, pepper, uh, garlic, just a mixture of, of spices. And then once the potatoes brown, I will add the beef. And then that combination will get topped with this cucumber, garlic, dill, tzatziki. Some of this hummus, this is grandma's hummus that we get at HEB, love this hummus right here. And then some of this Primal Kitchen barbecue ranch that's made with avocado oil. And of course, we need some ketchup on there. So let's make this and mash it. And here is the finished product. Now, it doesn't look like much, which is why it's called a mash bowl, a meat and potatoes mash bowl. So be on the lookout in the next couple weeks for the Bears Fit Cookbook. I'm telling you, if you get the opportunity and the chance, make this. You will not regret it. The flavors, next level. hitting a little recovery sauna session right now. But one thing that I did want to talk about in regards to implementing the math 180 formula into your training. And if you haven't been doing this before, it might be a little bit of a mental game. It was for me, at least. When you realize how slow you might have to run in order to keep your heart rate below that threshold, you're gonna be like, man, I'm running so slow. It's not doing anything for me, but it will improve. It will get better. So what happened when I started training to heart rate on these easy runs, these aerobic runs, is I realized I had to start running a 9, 15 minute per mile pace, which for me at the time was a lot slower to stay below that threshold. But over time, as I did that, my body acclimated and I built this strong aerobic base and foundation was I could run faster, so faster paces at a lower heart rate. And you'll see that that transition happen where your heart rate will start decreasing over time at similar or faster paces. So be patient with it, but you'll see the progress. Tonight for dinner, my dad is coming over, and when my dad comes over for dinner, we are limited to what we can make because he is the pickiest eater you will ever meet on planet Earth. So we're making homemade pizzas, and the trick to a good homemade pizza dough is this stuff right here. We use uh, half of this double zero unbleached extra fine flour, and then half just regular flour, dry yeast, 
some warm water, some olive oil, some salt. The dough was rising for the past five hours. Roll those out. They're back here on three separate pizza pans. And now we're gonna add the toppings. We're actually doing these pizzas on the Traeger. We have some old style pizza sauce. This is all picked up from HEB. We have some pepperoni from the deli, some fresh mozzarella. We have some of this cheddar, Greer, and Asiago. Asiago, probably messed up all of these cheeses. I also just uh, grated this freshly. This grabbed my attention in the store. Kerrygold Blarney Castle 100% natural cheese. I tried it, it was delicious. And then seasonings, we're gonna throw on some oregano and some of this Spiceology truffle parmesan. Now we are heating the Traeger up right now and the plan is to get that to 500 degrees. I think I can fit two on at a time. It is probably to no surprise that I am starving right now. And I could probably devour all three of these pizzas. So definitely our new way to make homemade pizza is on the Traeger. 500 degrees, ended up taking 20 minutes, not 10, because we like our crust pretty crispy. But if you get close and look at this, it is a nice, beautiful brown. It is crisp. It smells delicious. The cheese melted everywhere. And on the side, it's Steph and I, because my dad doesn't eat greens, we each have a salad, which is a, just a mixed green salad with diced up cucumber, Ch uh, cherry tomatoes, green apple, and uh, olive oil and balsamic. So that's the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Learned a little bit about heart rate training, 30 mile run, and uh, a lot of food. So we'll see you guys in the next video.